During the darkest nights of World War II, when blackout conditions were enforced and fuel was a scarce commodity, soldiers on both sides faced a serious problem. How to create light without giving away their position or relying on precious supplies? What emerged from this necessity was one of the most ingenious pieces of wartime innovation. The field light that burned without fuel. It wasn't magic. It was chemistry, survival instinct, and battlefield engineering rolled into one brilliant solution. And, you know, it worked so well that versions of this forgotten light are still quietly being used by off-grid survivalists today. Let's unpack what made this fuelless field light so special, how it worked, and how you can actually replicate its principles for modern-day use. By 1942, kerosene and oil were being rationed heavily, especially in forward areas where every drop of fuel was prioritised for vehicles and generators. Soldiers couldn't afford to waste fuel for basic illumination in trenches, field hospitals or command tents. They needed something that didn't rely on open flame or liquid fuel, and more importantly, something that wouldn't be visible to enemy aircraft during night raids. This drove military engineers and even resourceful infantrymen to experiment with chemical luminescence and reaction-based lighting. One of the most notable developments was the so-called chemical field lamp, an improvised system that created light through oxidation reactions rather than combustion. The concept was simple but powerful. Generate light through a controlled reaction between safe, portable materials. No wick, no flame, no smoke. The original version of this technology relied on calcium carbide, a compound that reacts with water to produce acetylene gas, a highly flammable and bright-burning gas used in lamps before the war. But soldiers modified the method to create a safer, slower reaction that emitted a steady glow rather than an open flame. The setup was clever a metal canister with a small water reservoir above a compartment holding calcium carbide granules. When a drop or two of water was allowed to contact the carbide, it produced acetylene gas, which was then diffused through a filtering medium like gauze, mica or porous clay. The result wasn't a flame. It was a glowing reaction chamber that produced light through chemiluminescence. In simple terms, it was a light powered by a chemical reaction rather than burning fuel. Some field reports also mention phosphorescent compounds being mixed into the reaction, likely a blend of zinc sulfide and copper to sustain the glow longer and reduce the intensity so it wouldn't give away positions at night. It was rugged, reusable and nearly silent. No open flame meant less risk in tight quarters or oxygen-restricted bunkers. And unlike oil lamps, it didn't produce soot or heat, making it ideal for map reading and medical work in the field. These lamps were often made from scrap parts, a testament to wartime improvisation. Tin food cans, artillery shell casings, and ration tins were common containers. The water control system was often just a small punctured canteen or cloth that dripped moisture slowly onto the carbide chamber below. To assemble one, a soldier would first place a small layer of calcium carbide often scavenged from older lamps or engineering stores, at the bottom of a can. Next, create a barrier using fine mesh or cloth to control the release of gas. Then, suspend a small reservoir of water above the carbide, with a pinhole or fabric wick allowing a slow drip. Finally, cover the top to contain the reaction, 
leaving a small hole for venting pressure. The result was a steady, glowing light source that could run for hours on minimal material, literally just water and a handful of carbide. When the reaction slowed, they'd drain the residue, which was calcium hydroxide, a harmless chalky paste, rinse the can, and refill it for another round. Soldiers in the Pacific and Eastern Front even modified these lamps using firefly extracts and luminescent minerals to enhance visibility without increasing brightness, an early version of, well, low-signature tactical lighting. If you're into off-grid living, disaster prepping, or wilderness survival, understanding this concept gives you a powerful tool. In situations where electricity or fuel aren't available, chemical or reaction-based lighting provides a safe and renewable alternative. You can still find calcium carbide today, it's used in caving lamps and metal cutting, and a single kilogram can provide dozens of hours of usable light when combined with a small amount of water. The same principle can also be replicated using modern chemiluminescent materials, such as the ones found in glow sticks, which are really direct descendants of World War II's fuelless light technology. The key takeaway here is that light doesn't have to come from burning fuel. It can actually come from controlling simple reactions between safe materials you can store indefinitely. For a practical application today, you can quite easily build your own low-tech emergency light. All you need is a small stainless steel container, a controllable drip source like a punctured bottle cap, and a few carbide granules. Place it on a stable surface. Allow the water to drip slowly, and just watch it glow. Always do this outdoors or in a well-ventilated area. But it's honestly an amazing way to see firsthand how World War II innovation can still serve modern preparedness. The soldiers who built these lamps probably didn't think they were making history. They just needed to see their maps without attracting bullets. But in doing so, they invented one of the earliest sustainable lighting systems. No oil, no electricity, and nearly no waste. Their knowledge quietly influenced everything from miners' lamps to the first glow stick technology decades later. This wasn't a high-tech military project. It was survival engineering at its finest, the kind of ingenuity that defines why the Second World War remains such a goldmine of forgotten survival wisdom. Every piece of scrap metal, every chemical reaction, every hack was born from necessity, not luxury. That's what makes this story worth preserving. If you found this deep dive useful, remember, this is exactly the kind of forgotten brilliance we uncover here on Warfield Survival. From the trenches to the home front, Every piece of Second World War survival knowledge has something to teach us about resilience and innovation. So, if you're serious about learning real, field-tested skills from history's harshest lessons, make sure you hit subscribe, share this video with fellow history enthusiasts, and keep these forgotten techniques burning bright, fuel or no fuel.